This is Ahwal Online, meeting point of accurate news and free comment on the current affairs of Turkey. Welcome to our podcast series. Hello and welcome to Talking Turkey. I'm your host, Aval editor David Lopeska, and with me today is Sevim Dadelen, German parliamentarian for Die Linke, or the left party, and a member of the Bundestag's Foreign Affairs Committee. Hello, Sevim, and thank you so much for joining us today. More than welcome, David. Hello. <clears throat> We are speaking on Tuesday, August 18, a day after the defense ministers of Turkey and Qatar met with Germany's foreign minister in Tripoli, Libya, to discuss a possible ceasefire deal to end Libya's nine-year civil war. Um, German Chancellor Angela Merkel organized talks on Libya in Berlin this past January, but those achieved very little. Now Germany is again trying to encourage talks as the Turkey-backed Government of National Accord, or GNA, readies to launch a major assault on Sirte and the forces of Khalifa Haftar, who is supported by the UAE, France, Russia, and Egypt. Uh, Sevim, I wonder if you have higher hopes for German diplomacy in Libya this time around? Uh, not really, actually. And uh, I think uh, Germany is not very um, credible at this moment. Mm. And, uh, to promote for us uh, for stopping arms exports from Qatar Emirates or Turkey to Libya to um, force longer uh, the war in Libya because you know Germany is a very big uh, arms export country. Uh, which is, you know, selling weapons to all the actors in Libya, uh, which are uh, part of the war there. For example, Turkey gets a lot of weapons, the Emirates get a lot of weapons, Qatar, uh, Egypt, and they are all actors, part of the war in Libya. So therefore, Uh, my uh, proposal was for uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Germany, Heiko Maas, you know, uh, if you go to Tripolis, uh, you should start uh, with an uh, embargo to all the countries which are, you know, part of the war there. And then you are credible and um, for your saying uh, regarding Libya. Right, right. In, in June, you wrote an article pointing out that in 2018, at least, I'm not sure if it's still the case, uh, no country purchased more German weapons than Turkey. About a third of all German weapons exports were to Turkey uh, after Ankara launched its military offensive against the Syrian Democratic Forces, or SDF, last October. Merkel vowed to stop all weapons exports to Turkey. But you pointed out in your article that this Uh, this ban did not apply to maritime weaponry. So that basically means Germany has continued to arm the Turkish Navy and, and, and in effect, support Turkish aggressions in the Eastern Mediterranean and, as you say, in Libya. Um, you Tell me, wrote, and you, 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 only you, in Libya, David, uh, excuse me, but not only for Libya, it's, it's, uh, it's the same with the escalation against Cyprus. Mm -hmm. escalation against Greece and even now uh, the escalation in Yemen Turkey is part of the escalation in Yemen too it's it's a part of the war now and um, Turkey under President uh, Erdogan is is as I said a front runner among emptors of German weapons of war uh, as you said last year 2019 Germany Uh, Turkey received weapons uh, worth uh, 345 million euros from the from Germany. Mm -hmm. That means that every third German-made weapon was designed for Turkey already in 2018. Uh, Turkey was a record holder among the recipients of German weapon exports worth 243 million euros. And As you said, after the invasion of Turkish troops in northern Syria, alongside with jihadist groups of Al-Qaeda uh, and Free Syrian 
army and whatever, all these jihadist groups, these terror groups. Who, who have faced accusations of war crimes, I should say, yes. Yes, of course, uh, and uh, who are in the West, uh, the so-called uh, freedom fighters, you know, mm-hmm. um, in, in Western territories uh, in the US or in the European Union, they talk about these uh, jihadist terrorist groups um, in Aleppo or in Idlib, uh, as if they were freedom and human rights fighters, but actually they are terrorist, Islamist, jihadist groups. And um, this uh, invasion of Turkish troops alongside with these uh, terrorist groups, that was and is in violation of international law. And, uh, and the renewed expulsion of hundreds of thousands of Kurds, Yazidis and Christians in autumn of 2019, the G- German government had officially ordered a stop to arms exports to Turkey. Chancellor Angela Merkel, for example, had assured the Bundestag in the German parliament uh, on October the 17th last year that the German government would not supply arms to Turkey under the current conditions. Uh, but mm-hmm. in- uh, that pledge uh, only applied to weapons that could be used in the war against Syria. Military equipment in the maritime sector, they said, was excluded from this arms export stop. And against the backdrop of the maritime escalation off of Libya, Cyprus and Greece, I think it's very irresponsible to do this politics. After all, Turkey which has been provided arms by the federal government, is one of the countries that are fueling the Libyan conflict with arms supplies, mercenary troops and military advisors. The Turkish Navy is securing illegal arms supplies to the Muslim Brotherhood government in Tripoli and uh, has already targeted ships of the European Union's uh, mission, uh, whose mission is to oversee the United Nations uh, arms embargo and Erdogan, the Turkish president, is forcing a geopolitical uh, conflict with the European Union member states, Cyprus and Greece, with test borings for natural gas explorations in the in the Mediterranean Sea. That means even if the German government would only, you know, only uh, give arms exports to Turkey for the maritime sector, it's just, you know, absolutely scandalous and irresponsible uh, regarding uh, this escalation in the Mediterranean Sea. Let's say Germany did halt all arms exports to Turkey. What might it do? What might Germany and the European Union do to better encourage negotiations on Libya as well as uh, on the Eastern Mediterranean and between Greece and Turkey? Those are talks that Germany is also trying to encourage. What what, might be done to better uh, encourage you know, those talks and move them forward? Well, first of all, we have to see why do we have the situation on Libya? It's because of the uh, aggressive intervention by the by France, by the US and the NATO. The NATO intervention um, is the reason for this mess in Libya, like it is in Iraq, or wherever, in Afghanistan and so on. So that means we have to stop this illegal regime change interventions, military interventions, first of all. Secondly, we have to stop these uh, ongoing interventions by foreign uh, countries, by foreign governments in Libya. You know, at the moment we do have France, Saudi Arabia, Emirates, Egypt, Qatar, uh, the US, Turkey, all of them are intervening in in Libya. And what do they want? Of course, they want geopolitical power there. But at the end, it's also a war of uh, the oil industries, the petrol uh, companies. It's the fight, uh, I mean, Italy is also a part of this war. So it's the fight, uh, the French companies like Total versus the Mm -hmm. 
the Italian oil companies. And I think the United Nations General Secretary is right to say all foreign troops and foreign countries and powers, they have to go out of Libya, first of all. And I think we have to ensure that also, and that would, would be a uh, really helpful move, a uh, helpful step to become freedom in, 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 uh, in Libya, is if we say not only the troops and the soldiers and the mercenaries of this government, uh, also the oil companies, they have to go and leave Libya too. Hmm, probably not going to happen anytime soon. Um, but now to um, German domestic issues. Germany is home to the largest Turkish diaspora community outside Turkey and the, the second largest Muslim population in Western Europe after France. Among Germany's nearly 5 million Muslims, around 3 million or so are of Turkish origin. And reports suggest they are increase, increasingly facing hostility. The number of Germans who want to ban Muslims from entering the country has increased sharply since the 2015-2016 refugee wave, which has helped fuel the rise of the far-right Alternative for Germany Party, or AfD. Uh, last year, a neo-Nazi killed a pro-immigrant politician in the state of Hesse, and this past February, a far-right extremist went on a shooting spree in two hookah bars in Hanau, killing nine people, including, I believe, six of them who were of Turkish or, or Kurdish origin. The Christian Science Monitor ran a piece just last week in which a researcher for the Bertelsmann Foundation said that half of the German population sees Islam as a threat. Uh, I wonder if you agree with this, Sevim. What's your experience of anti-Muslim sentiment in Germany? Well, first of all, uh, about uh, the um, if Islam is a threat or not, of course not. Uh, but I have to say, as left party, we stand up for religious freedom for all people living in Germany. And this includes that no religion shall be preferred by the state or no religion shall be disadvantaged by the mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. But it's also clear that the basis of living with one another in Germany is the basic law and not a religious rule book. And today, fundamentalist currents appear combative to aggressive under the banner of religious freedom in order to gain political influence in the public sphere. And this is a political debate in Germany, not a religious one, or even mm. about religious freedom. In the debate on religiously revealed ideologies, it is a fight against, a fight against the right, against reactionary worldviews. And this includes, you know, Islamist groups or uh, or advocates for political Islam in Germany, as well as far right wing uh, groups, which are you know making all these attacks to 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 um, synagogues or uh, mosques. Uh, mm -hmm. because in the ideology, they are the same. You know, they are the same. And uh, the thing is. Um, with the with the with the uh, diaspora in, in in Europe or in Germany, which is uh, pretty much uh, organized and manipulated by foreign governments like the Turkish one, it's it's a really um, actual problem in Germany because uh, as part of the foreign policy, the neo Ottoman foreign policy of the Turkish government, of the AKP uh, party, is uh, it is to, to bind the minorities of Turkish origin in Europe more closely to uh, onto itself. And therefore Erdogan has founded specifically for this purpose the so-called Office for Foreign Turks and Related Communities. And um, this uh, this uh, office, this ministry reports to a secretariat of the states, uh, and uh, and this is, uh, uh, you know, in a way uh, you can observe that the um, you can say the originally German right wing parties or groups on one hand side, and on the other hand side you have the the the, the Turkish 
uh, foreign policy in Germany with the diaspora and trying to 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 manipulate Turkish origin people in in in, in Germany. This builds like you know uh, it's, it's it makes them uh, there is a hmm, not visible bond. The the one uh, one of them is making propaganda against the other one and tr trying to get strength. Uh, and to be stronger just because of this propaganda about mm -hmm. the other one. And the other one is doing the same about the other one. You know, do you understand my point? Yes. <laughs> and, and, and that makes it diff difficult to combat all these reactionary politicians uh, or politics uh, with these groups. You mentioned um, the involvement of Turkey, of the Turkish state in Germany, uh, Germany's largest Muslim group, the Turkish Islamic Union for Religious Affairs, or DITIB, uh, has, has been accused of spying for Turkey. DITIB, uh, which is still largely run by the Turkish government, oversees some 900 mosques in Germany, and the German television channel ZDF released a documentary in June detailing how Turkish intelligence relies on DITIB mosques to find supporters of the Gulen movement, which Turkey blames for a failed 2016 coup, or, or possibly supporters of the Kurdish cause as well. Um, some 10 to 15,000 Turkish citizens fled to Germany and other European states and the U.S. as well, but that many fled to Germany after the 2016 failed coup. And Erdogan, President Erdogan himself, has said Germany is hosting thousands of terrorists, he called them. Uh, I wonder what is your view of DITIB and, and of Turkey's influence within German mosques and among German Muslims? Yeah, I mean, since the ascension to power by Turkish uh, President Erdogan, um, structures increasingly have been put in place in Germany that pursue a single goal. Uh, they are namely to fight opponents of the Turkish ruling party, the AKP in Germany, as well as to promote the nationalist Islamist cause in Turkey. And this also became especially evident in the course of the adoption of the Armenian resolution by the German Bundestag in 2016 and the Turkish reaction to, uh, to this resolution. The threats and abuses, some of which were hateful, were encouraged by statements by the high-ranking Turkish politicians, even President Erdogan did this, and uh, government-related media. So, for example, I myself have been under police protection ever since, since 2016. And ever since the... Well, can I ask, what, what was the reason for that? Was the, were you threatened in some way or...? Yes, I was targeted by personally by the Turkish uh, president, by uh, members of his government. And, uh, and uh, of course, if he starts to target someone, there are thousands and, uh, and ten thousands of uh, fans of him which are so insane and, you know, they threatening you. And um, that's why I uh, have been attacked uh, several times. And since then, uh, I and some colleagues of mine as well from different other parties are under police protection. Wait, but, wait, sorry, when you say attacked, you mean on social media, not physically? Uh, even physically. Mm. Yes, at my office. And, um, but... Ever since the failed uh, coup in uh, July 2016, it was quite after the Armenian resolution by the German Bundestag, an intensification of the Turkish state's attempts to exert even more influence on the Turkish diaspora and so-called German of Turkish origin in Germany has been observed. And these efforts um, emanate from the DTIP, among others, the association of masks is structurally and directly linked with personnel of the Dianet. This is the Presidium of the Religious Affairs in Turkey, which reports directly to President Erdogan. And the imams sent by Dianet to German mosques are paid by the respective Turkish consulates general. So, DTIP imams have gathered information in German mosques on behalf of Dianet about alleged followers of the Gulen movement or some other opponents. And the prayers uh, in, in DTIP mosques 
prayers are said for the uh, victory of the Turkish army alongside the Islamist murder gangs in northern Syria, for example, and children are harnessed with uniforms and rifles for war games. And um, all this is, of course, water to the mills of the aggressive, foreign and repressive domestic policy of uh, the Erdogan government in, in Turkey. But above, above all, it is a poison, of course, of integration efforts in Germany as well. And we know experts speak up that there in Germany are more than 6,000 agents and informants, like spies, are active in Germany who are working for the uh, secret service of Turkey, of MIT. And in addition to this, there is a lobby organization, the Union of International Democrats or the fascist group Green Wolves, and also uh, gangs uh, like the Ottoman Germania, which are um, directed uh, by the Turkish uh, government as well. And we know that, for example, uh, in March 2018, Erdogan's secret service kidnapped six suspected Gulen supporters in Kosovo in a commando action and abducted them to Turkey. This has and, also been done in other countries, yes. Yes, in other countries as well. So the thing is, uh, they do have a very aggressive foreign policy, very aggressive, um, violating international law, of course, and they abusing Interpol as well. Well, well to that point, that, that's, that leads a good leading to my next question. Exiled Turkish journalist John Dundar, who is also in Germany, in Berlin, wrote an article for the Washington Post last December detailing how Turkey has in the past arranged operations against dissidents abroad, particularly Kurdish figures. Uh, the title of the article was Erdogan has issued a license to kill, and Dundar argued that Turkey was plotting to assassinate Turkish dissidents abroad. Uh, I wonder if you read this piece. Um, I, I wonder if you think that's a realistic possibility and even something that maybe you fear. Well, it's more than realistic. Mm. Um, it's, uh, I think it's very likely, too, mm. um, because I am very much in contact with um, German government, uh, the Ministry for Interior Affairs and uh, the services of them. And we know that there are a lot of really threats and danger for prominent, like not everyone, but prominent popular opponents who are living in Germany uh, and are uh, are, are um, doing politics as well. I mean, Jan Dündar, he came to exile. He's a friend of mine. He came to Germany, uh, but he is not silent, you know what I mean? He's not mm -hmm. silent. Mm -hmm. He's doing politics, he's doing his projects, and he's still criticizing the Turkish um, government, and that's why he is uh, in danger, of course. And there are a lot of other persons who are in danger as well. So. It's very realistic, and I think it's very likely too, um, as far as I can see it from all the information I've got, and um, because they do have the uh, the structural, the, the infrastructure, it is already here in Germany and in the European Union member states of the Turkish Secret Service and uh, all their possibilities. Just a last question before I let you go. Um, we talked about DITIB and, and Turkish influence among uh, German Muslim communities. The German government has sought to eliminate or significantly reduce Turkish influence on its Muslim communities, um, notably with the launch last year of a domestic imam education program. I wonder what are your thoughts on that initiative and, and of Germany's kind of broader efforts to reduce Turkish influence? Mm. Well, I think there should be zero tolerance for Erdogan's anti-democrats and zero German tax money should be allotted as is intended for Turkish schools to open in Berlin, Cologne and in Frankfurt. Mm. And even the, the, the cooperation in some areas of Germany, we have a federal system, so some states, they still work uh, very strongly 
with DTIP. I think it's uh, it's uh, scandalous and there would should be no tolerance and no cooperation at all. Actually, we have to uh, we have to um, prove if this um, thing it's it's a really weird thing that DTIP DTIP is not just a mosque, it's not just a religious thing, it is a political thing. And they are using political power here. And this kind of thing, we do not have this in with other religion, you know, because they do have more than 900 mosques. The imams were paid by a foreign country and foreign government. It is not just paid, it is totally strictly controlled by a foreign country. and you know, these are uh, representatives of a foreign country, uh, of a country abroad, because the, the chief of DITIB in Germany, he has a diplomatic status, you know, he has a diplomatic passport. He is a representative of the uh, uh, Republic of Turkey. He's not a religion, uh, a representative of a religion. So therefore, I think, the whole construct, we have to prove this, if this is really something which we have to have in Germany. And the thing with the Imam education program, the German government is, from my point of view, completely wrong uh, in its dealings with Erdogan and with the mosque association with DITIB, even after it has been revealed that DITIB imams are working as informers, as spies for Erdogan, the federal government has issued hundreds of work visas for new prayer leaders from uh, Turkey. And um, the reason is <clears throat> because Germany has no problem with the political Islam actors like these Muslim brothers like Erdogan or some others. And it was and remains fundamentally wrong uh, to pay court to reactionary association financed or directed from abroad out of misunderstood tolerance as is this the case with TTIP or DTIP or the Central Association of Muslims in Germany, to which the Sur Turkish Association ATIP and from the spectrum of the right wing Turkish extremist group Grey Wolves also stands. And I think it is fatal and dangerous that the federal government should seek the cooperation of forces that stand for a conservative to reactionary interpretation of Islam while while, and this is uh, very important, while liberal democratic Muslims are being marginalized by government or some other groups. We have mm, to, mm. So I, I would say, we have to strengthen the secular Muslims, the Democrats, the liberals, but not these reactionary troops of, uh, of uh, a Muslim brother like the Turkish president Erdogan. So, so what do you think the German government should do, though, about DITIB? Should, should it be outlawed? Should it be forced to restructure and disconnect from Turkey in some way? I mean, you cannot disconnect something. You know, uh, they say, uh, yeah, we have to uh, force them to disconnect from Turkey. Uh, this is like if I would say I have to disconnect the German embassy in Turkey from Germany. Mm -hmm. It's absurd because... You know, the, the DTIP, the organization DTIP, is a part of uh, the Turkish government. They are representatives. Like I said, they are diplomats. And so if you do want to have uh, um, a mosque or a religious, um, uh, religious uh, building where Muslims can come and pray, you should, you know, make a cooperation with a really religious uh, organization and not a political one. This mm. is a political organization. That's why they work for the Germ uh, for the Turkish president. They that's why they spy for him because they get the order of them, and that's uh, uh, and that's because they uh, uh, and that's why they are paid by them. And that's why you cannot, you know, uh, expect that your asking disconnect please from Turkey, that means, you know, <laughs> destroy yourself. So that's absurd and this is ridiculous. We have to stop the cooperation with DTIP, no money for DTIP uh, and no, uh, uh, um, no uh, 
permissions uh, to to work on this uh, level in Turkey uh, in Germany. This is our position. We say uh, we should work with the liberal Muslims and secular ones, and not with an organization which is directed and led by uh, abroad from a, a different uh, government, which has different goals than the German government. Mm-hmm. I'd love to talk about it more, but I know you have to go. Sevim uh, Daritelen, German parliamentarian for Die Linke or the Left Party. Thank you so much. It's It's been a real pleasure talking to you. <laughs> more than welcome. Thank you very much. You can follow Ahwal News Online podcast series through Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Spreaker. All you need to know about Turkey is here for your ears, mind, and attention. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Thank you.